So uh, I'll be talk about modeling simulation animation of closed uh, closed uh, loop system. Okay, and I don't mean in terms of feedback, but in terms of linkages. So uh, specifically, I'll be talking about a five linked chain. One, two, three, four, let's say five. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is a five link chain. So you can see it's constrained on, uh, let's call that point A, point B. It's constrained on those two points. And how do you actually go about uh, modeling and simulating such a system? Okay, this is where you can think of another application of Jacobian is to actually be able to do this. So how do we do that? So my plan is to first show you how to do that uh, by writing equations and then go on to MATLAB to show you how to implement it. And then finally, we'll also do this in Copilla Sim where you don't have to really bother about equations, it'll just do it for you. But it's good to know what goes in between. So the first thing you want to do is you want to break the closed link, uh, closed loop system at, at any location you, you choose to. So first is break the system, okay? Uh, you could break it, let's say here. Uh, so then it will be, if you break it there, then it will be a five link pendulum, right? Starting from here, you could break it there. If you break it at point B, then it's a five link pendulum for point A. You could also break it uh, here, in which case you'll have a two link pendulum on the left side and a three link pendulum on the right side. You could also break it here. I mean, there are just multiple ways you can break it. Um, no matter how you break it, you will, you can actually do this. So what I'll do is I'll stick to the simplest way of breaking it. It'll, we'll just break it at B. Okay, that will, so we'll do that. Then we'll uh, derive equations of five link pendulum, which is not a closed chain or a closed loop system. So that would be two, okay, missed one link, just redraw it. Two, three, four and five. Okay, and then final step is enforce the closed loop at B using uh, Jacobian. Okay, so basically we'll say that the point B is not free, or this is B is not free. It's basically constrained to be uh, pinned and that will enforce a uh, They'll enforce a constraint that point B does not move. Uh, so it does not move because it's pinned. And then there are reaction forces at B along the X and Y direction, which prevent it from moving. And that's how we'll get that closed loop chain. Okay, so this is step two. The first step is, is easy. The step two, you would use Euler Lagrange equations. And then step three, what we'll do is we'll actually use the, addi the additional terms, the QJ in the use QJ on the right hand side of, let's call that EL to enforce constraint constraints at B. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so I'll do it in two parts. So let's do it in two parts. First part is step two, which is basically writing the equations of a five link pendulum. Okay, we'll put it a little bit steeper this way. Okay, 
that's theta one and then we'll extend this this is theta two extend this theta three extend this theta four theta five Okay, and so I'm going to do a few things which will make my life easy in terms of derivation, which is I'm going to assume that the mass is right in the middle. Just use a different color for this. Assume the mass is in the middle like this. The length of the pendulum is L. So if it's in the middle, then this distance is going to be L divided by two. And then I can also assume that there's some inertia I. Okay, and I'm just going to assume that all the links have the same mass, same inertia, and they'll just make my equations pretty compact. Otherwise it will just be pages and pages of equations. And I'll show you actually, this is a mess. Uh, getting these equations is going to be a big mess and I'm not going to even copy paste. I'm just going to let MATLAB write the equations, the right-hand side for me. Okay, so that's how I uh, model the pendulum. Now let's start following steps for Euler-Lagrange equations. So Euler-Lagrange. Okay, so first step is find positions and velocity. Okay, again, I'm not going to spend time, but look at double pendulum. I did a double pendulum simulation where we talked about how to get the positions, velocities, and it's just going to be the same thing, except that you need to do that for five times. And I didn't even bother writing this uh, by hand. I just went to MATLAB and I just copy pasted the double pendulum code and added a few lines to make it five links. The second step is uh, find the Lagrange, uh, Lagrangian. Uh, I am going to show you the, the code for the five link pendulum in just a bit, and then I'll post it. So the Lagrangian is L equals T minus V, which is a straightforward once you have the energy and the potential. And then third step is the Euler Lagrange equations, which is T dt dl dq dot j minus dl dqj equals qj. And for this case, for, uh, well, qj is going to be theta one, theta two, theta three, theta four, theta five, that'll be five equations. And then qj is zero for pendulum that has no, external forces. Okay, so there's no forces right now because we're just doing a pendulum and I and you really don't need to do a pendulum. You can directly go to the chain or the closed loop system, just that I want to show you how those equations look like. Uh, I just made slight changes to equations. So it just prints out something and I'll show you how, how that all works out. So next is head to MATLAB. So I'm going to show you how the equations are derived and how to simulate, animate a five link pendulum. Okay. This is essentially taken from um, the double link pendulum. Uh, what I did was, uh, however, I just noticed this. I used uh, Q1 equals theta one and so on, just because Q1 is shorter than theta one uh, in the derivation. And then I used, uh, u1 in place of theta1 dot and so on. Okay, u1 is so the velocity or angular velocity, sorry. And then I used, I think, a1 for theta1 d dot. So it's the second derivative of q1, which is the acceleration. Okay, so it just becomes a little bit more compact. And then I said, I have mass, inertia, gravity, c, which is basically uh, 0.5 L, which is basically the, the geometric center of the pin of the each link. And then I assume that all masses are the same and so on. So 
I also did some changes to the earlier code in terms of instead of defining the homogeneous matrix uh, in the code, I made a function. All that function does is it calculates the homogeneous matrix and it just makes my life easy uh, versus trying to do that in this code. And so I created the homogeneous matrix. And once you have the homogeneous matrix, getting the center of mass of the individual links is very easy. So then the X and the Y position. So that completes my position. Then to get the velocity, it's simply the using the Jacobian can find the velocity. Okay, and this is basically finding the X component of the velocity and then the Y component. So it's just all very compact here. And then the angular velocity, the kinetic energy, the potential energy and L equals T minus V. And then, then I did some more simplifications to my code, which earlier I had explicitly written down here. I've used some summation just to make it easier to derive the equations, but should be fairly straightforward to understand what's going on. It's basically clubbing the, those uh, Jacobian terms together such that you get um, the right thing on the right side of the equations. Okay, so the difference with, with the code which I created earlier is that instead of making this file print out the output here in the command window, which I then copy paste, I instead did this charter thing, which is I basically made MATLAB write the file, the right hand side file I care about. Okay. And that way, what happens is it makes my uh, life easy. I don't have to copy paste. In fact, the equations become so lengthy that uh, MATLAB doesn't quite write them on command window. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So first, let me run this. So questions is done. So it's said generating RHS file. Okay, so I showed you the RHS file, but if I try to print this, let's try, let me try to print this C, okay? So C is basically a five by one matrix for the Coriolis forces. Let me just add one comma one. So this is what the C one comma one looks like. And if I just keep scrolling, just keeps going on and on and on and on. Yeah, so in this case, it actually wrote down the entire entire line of equations, but there are cases when the lines are so long that it will truncate the output and so you will not be able to copy paste. So let me do CLC. It actually also gets this thing hung. So what I did was in, in instead of that, I made it print the file the way I want it separately. So I'll show you what that file looks like. It basically prints the entire right hand side for uh, right hand side for me uh, the file name is is right here it should be called five link pendulum rhs.m and i'll show you what it looks like this is what it was was generated you can see it was generated just now two minutes back uh, i don't try to open this in matlab because it sometimes chokes matlab and then i have to quit it instead i recommend is opening it with wordpad or some editor it's 77 kb is long so let me just open it with text edit, which is like WordPad of this derivation uh, in Notepad, because if I open it in MATLAB, it gets uh, MATLAB freezes because it's too much lines of code. But I just want you to appreciate how much this, how, how much computation this is. And you just can't do this by hand. So that's M11, M12, M13, and so on. And then it keeps going. And then if you see C11, which is the Coriolis force, that just runs and runs and runs. And so uh, you do, really don't want to be copy pasting this much code from one place to another because you may skip something. And by the way, MATLAB truncates output. It doesn't print the whole thing unless you just output it in a separate window. Uh, okay, so 77 KB. Okay, so I'm fine with that. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is to actually run the animation. So the main file. Uh, and the main file I've set up parameters, mass, uh, inertia, length, and gravity. And then, then everything is usual stuff. You use OD45, find link, five link pendulum RHS, which was by the way generated automatically. And I'm gonna run it and five link pendulum and 10 link pendulum always fun to watch. So here is a simulation followed by the animation.
Oh, wow. Okay, so that's uh, five link pendulum and then the, all the positions velocity are crazy. Okay, so that's step one. Now let's see how to do the chain. Or for the modeling first. So we've already got the equations of the five link pendulum. Okay, so now this link, which is link B, has to be constrained to the, the wall, right? Let's say that this distance is, I actually wrote LX, LY, so it doesn't have to be exactly here. You can, if you want to put it here, that's fine too. Just one, two, three, four, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so basically what I did was I specified this distance to be LX and this distance to be LY. And it doesn't really matter where you put this at X, LY, as long as it's within the reach of the five links, right? It shouldn't be more than five meters long because each length was one meter and so on. So this point is B and we want to see that point B is not moving. Okay, so closed loop. This was step three, if you remember. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to modify the equation and add the constraint forces. So here I write down the Euler-Lagrange equations. Everything remains the same, except that now we introduce QJ, okay? And this QJ is basically going to tell us what is the torques uh, or what is the effect of constraining this point B uh, on the rest of the system. So for that QJ, which is basically the torques at J equals one, two, three, four, five, but you could find the net torque, which is produced by holding B fixed or, or rather making X, the position of the X and Y position of B equal to zero by, by that I mean the acceleration, or you could also find the torque by saying that simply the Jacobian of point B, okay, transpose times the force which is acting at B to keep the point B fixed. And those that force is going to have two components. There's an X component and a Y component. So let's say this is the Y. And that basically is an unknown. You don't know that forces, but the, the equations will actually give you that force. There's a PX, PY, and they're unknowns. So this is PX, PY, okay? And then the Jacobian is basically, you need to find the position of B. So B has two coordinates, X, B, Y, B, okay? So once you have X, B, Y, B, and you can get X, B, Y, B by using the kinematics, what you need to do is you need to take dx b with respect to d theta one, dx uh, b with respect to d theta two and so on till dx b d theta five and then dy b d theta one, dy b d theta two and so on till dy b d theta five. And so this is, uh, this is Jacobian of b by the way, this two cross five. There are two rows and five columns because there are five degrees of freedom. When you do J B transpose times P, we are talking about a five by two matrix because you invert, you, you take the transpose of J B and then P is two comma one. So the net result is this whole thing is going to be five cross one, okay? So there are five rows, one column, and that's precisely what we want here. If you forget this, this is five cross one. It basically is telling you what are the torques at the joints one through five, such that point B is going to be fixed, okay? So when you do this math for this equation, we write that one, we write on the next page, you'll end up with something which looks like this. So the equations of a manipulator always, always look something like this. Uh, C theta, theta dot, theta dot, so that's the Coriolis force, G theta for the gravitational force equals the external torque, so it's the motor torque, 
okay which by the way is going to be zero we assume that there are no motors here but if you had motors you would have put torque one torque two and so on plus j p transpose p okay so what we have here is five by one unknowns and then we have two by one unknown so there are these are an unknown the accelerations are unknown the forces are unknown so we have seven unknowns but then these these are five equations and those are the equations for theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 5 so we are we cannot solve for five equations um, seven unknowns using five equations we are missing something the thing which we are missing is basically the fact that point b is which you can see over here point b is fixed by that i mean acceleration of b is zero so x of b double dot is zero y double dot b equals zero so we need to include that uh, if you don't include that then you'll see that b will just start flying so first constraint is we so we are missing two constraints which are x b double dot equals y b double dot equals zero so we can add it in two ways one is you can actually take x b position of x b is going to be a function of theta one all the way to theta five you can differentiate it two times using matlab diff you do it two times or you can use the jacobian and i recommend using the jacobian because it's nice to do it so here's how you will do it so we know that x b is some function so sorry x b dot right is jacobian of b times q dot what is q dot q dot or my bad let me write it as theta dot right but theta dot is so this is five um see, this is five comma one and i should maybe write it this way x b y b x b dot y b dot is j b times theta dot so j b we just wrote it down some time back so j b we wrote it is two comma five right gives you uh, uh, it's basically the jacobian of those x and y with respect to thetas so we already have this to be two comma five so when you do this math two comma five two 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 times five five times one we get two slash one which means it's going to give you the velocity of x in the y and the z direction so let's call this so let's call this with this notation let's call this z dot b equals j b theta dot okay i'm just using z b to represent x b dot and y b dot okay our constraint however is this it's not velocity it's an acceleration in fact b can have a non zero velocity uh, but can still have still needs to have a zero acceleration so what i need to do is i need to do z b double dot right which is x b double dot y b double dot equals so now i need to take the derivative of j b theta dot and the way you do it is you use chain rule you keep j b fixed you take the derivative of theta second time so it's theta dot double dot plus uh keep theta dot fixed but take the derivative of jb so it's jb dot theta dot okay so what we get is we get this two more equations okay i'll talk about how to compute this we already know how to compute this we've done that uh to compute jb dot we just take the, each and every element of jb so it's a 2 by 5 matrix you take the first element take the time derivative second element take the time that's the easiest way to do it i have not found a easier way than that to do it and i'll show you how to do it in code okay so our equations looks like this m and i'm going to ignore the function of theta here just because it's more co compact writing it this way so i'm going to move this jb transpose p on the left side i'll be getting jb transpose times p equals 0 and then this one gives me 
z b double dot, but z b double dot is basically zero. So I can write j b theta double dot plus j b j b dot theta dot equals zero. Okay, those are my two equations. I need to do a little bit more simplification. First of all, let's see what are the unknowns and what are the knowns in these equations. So theta double dot is an unknown. P is an unknown. Everything else is known. Now, when you say it's known, it's known at that time step because we're going to use that in, in the in OD45. So what I'll do is I'm going to write all the unknowns here, theta double dot and P, and then move everything which is left on the right-hand side. So what I need to do is this is known and this is known. So I move it to the right-hand side with a minus sign. Uh, this is again going to be known. So I move it to the right-hand side, jb dot, theta dot. And then whatever remains has to be put in a matrix. So first is the mass matrix. So M times theta double dot, that gives me this. Then I need to do something times P. So it's going to be minus jb transpose, which will then multi get multiplied with P. And then I have JB, theta double dot. So JB has to come here. That gets multiplied with this. And then I'll have a zero here because there's no P appearing here. And I think I did a mistake here. I just need to make this negative because this moves to the right hand side. So this is my equation for a chain. So let me summarize this finally. So pendulum, the equations are m theta double dot equals minus c theta dot minus g for chain or a closed loop system. The equations are m minus jb, jb theta double dot p equals minus c theta dot minus g minus j dot j dot jb dot theta dot. So you can see that the equations are slightly different from the pendulum. You only have this constraint forces at B, which shows up. Negative Jacobian should be the transpose, right? Right, okay, good catch. Okay, so this is the difference. So when I do this, I basically will get this right-hand side, I will invert it. So, To solve for this, I will invert this matrix. I'll do that numerically because doing it uh, symbolically is going to be a big mess. First only the equations are super long and then doing it symbolically is going to be a big mess. So I'll do this. It'll, it'll give me the five by one theta accelerations. It will give me two by one uh, uh, forces Sometimes I care about the force, I want them, but sometimes I just don't care. I only need the first five accelerations to simulate. So I'm going to show you next MATLAB code, which will um, derive the equations. Okay, let's get to that. And then I need to come back here to show you something about simulations. It's not just putting in initial conditions and getting it going. So let's start my five link chain file. Okay, it's essentially, almost identical to the earlier file I shared on the pendulum. The only difference here being that everything is here to say, the only difference being that uh, I call that link point P. Okay, so this P, P is B in the notes. Okay, I, I didn't use quite B, I use P, but that P basically gives the position of the end of the link, which is at the end, it's at distance L from the previous link. Uh, I find the position of P. Again, I said P is B in my notes. Uh, find the position, find the velocity, and then, uh, and I'll tell you why I do that later on uh, when I talk about sim uh, simulations. This is all is the same, except that uh, I also find the Jacobian of P, and then I get the J dot, which is, as I said, was basically taking the, the you can either take, each term of the Jacobian and do diff, or you can use the Jacobian of the Jacobian to find that using the same chain rule I talked about earlier. Right? So this Jacobian of J 
each element that is i comma j with respect to q dot and you get the time rate change of the jacobian j dot so this gives j dot and then i do the same thing i generate the files the difference being that i now need j i need j dot and i also need well and this is actually basically setting up the equations for me the way i wanted it and so if i run this it produce can i printed something there but okay this it produced this file 159 pm so it's about 81 kb long it's not too long compared to the previous one it only have a few more things added to it right okay okay so now let's get to the animation part the animation part is you need to do something more before you can animate and i'll talk about it in a in just a bit Okay, so let's get to relations. Okay, so there's one difference between doing simulations for pendulum and doing simulations for a chain. For a pendulum, so this is simulations. So let's see a pendulum. For the pendulum, what I did was simply set one line, one the first link at ninety degrees, and then other links were at zero degrees. So this is how I started the pendulum. Theta two equals theta three equals theta four equals theta five equals zero. And so you keep it that way, and then of course I set the velocities to all be zero. And then you just let it go. It all falls down and things look beautiful. Now, there is a difference between doing this uh, with uh, chains. So first of all, in the chains, you need to decide where you're going to fix the point B. So in this case, I think I took one meter length and I believe I took the attachment point to be one, three meters or two meters. It's just like three meters. So I decided that this is going to be Lx is going to be three meters. Okay, that's B. Let's say. Okay, so if I give you point A and if I give you point B, and I know that my pendulum is um, starts over here, I need to ensure that point B, that is the end of link uh, of the last link of the pendulum, is actually attached at point B. Okay, so I can't choose something like this, right? Or I can't choose something like this. Like I chose for the pendulum because this point is not attached to point B. So I need to ensure ensure theta one, theta two, theta three, theta four, theta five are such that X B. So if you assume that my coordinate system starts this way and origin is here that x b is l x equals three and y b is l y equals zero, right? Because b is at three comma zero and a is at zero comma zero. So I need to ensure that. So the question is, how do you how do you find these thetas? Well, you use root finding. Yeah, inverse kinematics, that's right. So use, use root finding or inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics is probably a better word. Inverse kinematics to get this. So use the same thing you use, uh, so use F solve. So basically you have two equations. One is XB equals three, one YB equals zero. And then you have five, two outputs, which are given here. And there are five inputs. The inputs being theta one all the way to theta five. So you have five ways to choose and you can actually set three and you can make it choose two or you can make it set all five or you can make it set three and whatever you want. So it really doesn't matter as long as uh, you find something consistent. So that's the first thing. The second condition is that point B, the, the velocity of point B 
has to be um, what you really want it to be. In this case, B is fixed. B is not moving or, or the end of the link B is not moving. You could have a situation where B is moving up and down at a certain speed. That's perfectly possible. You can have a, it says it's moving at constant speed, which doesn't violate the condition that acceleration is zero. But in this case, I assume that B is fixed or velocity of B is zero. So X B dot is zero and so is Y B dot. So if I want to find now the, the issue is I need to find theta one dot, theta two dot, theta three dot, theta four dot and theta five dot such that this is true. Okay, now note that here in step one, you already found these inputs. The angles are known, the configuration is known. We have not figured out the velocities. Okay, so we do the same thing, which is we use F solve, F solve, which has two outputs. Here the outputs being the velocities and five inputs, which they being theta one dot, theta two dot, so on to theta five dot. And once you have that right, you know that you start this pendulum in the right way. That is point B has fixed zero speed and let it go and everything will look very consistent. So I need to ensure that. So I need to do F solve two times, one to find position and one to find angle. I, I, once first to find the angles and then given the angles, I can find the position. So I'm going to show you that. So this is my five link uh, main file. Okay. And what I did was first, as I said, I chose LX to be three, LY to be zero. So it's hung three comma zero. Uh, I solve for, I use F solve and I solve for position. So I have a function called position last link, which basically returns the X, B and Y, B. Okay. And then it solves for these five numbers. And then the thing is you have to use this algorithm, Levenberg market, because that one allows you to change five variables. If you use the default algorithm, it says there's an error or it actually reverts this one because it only can solve a square system. By the square system, I mean, it will solve for two equations, two unknowns. Here we have two equations and there are five unknowns. So I use this algorithm. So that basically computes Q's. And once I get the Q's, then I solve for U's or the velocities using F solve again. But now I have the velocity of the last link. So if you look at the position last link tip, it's this, it was generated by uh, MATLAB here, XP, YP, that's what I copy pasted here. And then F gives me the difference between XP and LX, YP and LY. And velocity of last link is similarly uh, VXP, VYP, which both should be zero. Okay, so that's what I do first. And then I do the normal five link chain RHS thing. So let me run this. Okay, so that's it. It's not more, it's not as chaotic as the five link pendulum, but it's still uh, fun to watch it. Okay, it stopped, and this is how the positions and velocities change. 